What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your support in getting us this far. Now, today we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by a duo that has a brand new album out. I'm very excited for everybody to check it out if they haven't already. Triz and Mike Summers with Baseline Cavi. Thanks y'all for coming through. Yeah, good to be here. Yes, yes. So uh, Triz has been putting out a lot of great music. Mike Summers, for those that also know, has been producing a lot of great music for a long time now. So uh, Triz, for you, getting with Baseline Cavi with, with Mike, what drew you to his production and what he was doing that made you want to have him produce uh, the entirety of Baseline Cavi? Well, I had already been wanting to work with uh, Seven because I found out about him through Brother Lynch Hung. For a lot of those that know me, I came in the game with Lynch. So uh, we were working on Manable Lecter at the time. And um, he was, I had, I was already a fan of Seven because I had heard, heard co Hanging Strangler and I had, I had heard Dinner in a Movie and the production on there is so cinematic, I fell in love with it. So I had always been wanting to work with him. So fast forward, um, you know, he, uh, Dave Weiner ended up reaching out to me and letting me know that he wanted to work. Uh, this is probably like a year ago. And I was like super excited because I've all, like I said, I've always been a fan. He he makes the same exact like type of hard hitting beats that I'm into. Um, producer for Lynch, producer for Tech. Like I was just always a fan of it. Nice. Yeah. So Seven, a.k.a. Michael Summers, for you getting with uh, Triz, since you've been doing so much, uh, he referenced the Brother Lynch hung stuff you did while doing stuff with Strange. How is it? when you were starting to get reached out to by people that weren't really of the strange family moving, you know, being based in LA now? Uh, um, no, nah, I, I, to me, like it was just growth, you know, that was something that it was harder for me to do that when I was, um, you know, on the label and, you know, I now I have the freedom to, to move and, and work with different artists, you know, and, um, I, you know, I wanted to find like, the right kind of artist that will sound good on like my kind of production, like, like my sound, you know, um, and I wanted to build something new. And so, um, you know, when I moved to LA, uh, I did start connecting with like, you know, new artists and finding, you know, uh, new circles. Um, and I just wanted to build something of my own that really represented like, you know, who I was like as a producer, um, it just had to be the right artist. You know what I mean? I just, and Triz was someone that I wanted to work with for a long time. We did a track together uh, 2013 on a Lynch record, the, the MDK uh, track. Um, and it, so it, it goes all the way back to 2013, but um, you know, everything just came full circle. He wanted to work. I was like, yeah, let's see how it goes. But I knew immediately off top after we just did like a couple songs together, I was like, oh yeah, this is, <laughs> this is, this is going to be it for sure. Yeah. And, and speaking of the brother Lynch on connection, Triz on Instagram, of course, your baby rip gut yeah. and baseline Cavi is nothing like the Manable Lecter series that, that Lynch did was strange. So how, you're very versatile and you have a lot of different things that you do musically. So with Baseline Cavi, how did you come up with that, you know, lane artistically and lyrically as opposed to Manable Lecter style, for instance? Well, see, like <clears throat> I got into the whole Manable Lecter thing, just like as I got older and I was getting out of high school, I was always watching like I'm into horror films and stuff like <clears throat> I'm into like um, true crime, you know, investigation, discovery type stuff. And when I heard the Lynch record, it just made me want to get it like more cinematic with my music. I'm like, damn, this sounds like a movie on tape. So that's where I got it from. But like my roots is like super West Coast. The first album I ever heard like at four years old was Bow Down. Like my dad played that from front to back. Uh, he always played the Parliament, the Funkadelics. He played the Ohio players. He played like, you know, a lot of funk music, you know what I mean? Zapping Roger and, uh, and, and so forth. And so I come from that already. I'm from the West Coast. So like that's already embedded in me. So like if you notice, we sampled the Atomic Dog joint. We sampled uh, Aqua Boogie by the Parliament. Like so that's my roots. That's what I come from. You know what I mean? You know, backyard barbecue, 40 ounce sipping, blunt smoking. Like that's that's what I come from. So like jumping into that bag was like second nature. And I know like the back of my hand. So like when I'm 
when I'm talking and I'm spitting, like I'm just I'm just telling the story. I'm just talking about what I come from. You know what I mean? So that was nothing. But when I get on my like my lint stuff, it's like, you know, are they Halloween, dark fall type music? Like I really get into a mode where I have to focus strictly on that because, you know, that's more of my cinematic look, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And throughout, uh, especially in the intro of Baseline Cavi and the Inland uh, uh, 7, I wanted you to talk about using those Funky Worm, Atomic Dog, George Clinton stuff that is so entrenched with the West Coast. How did you musically on the production side use it and and use it in a way that you thought was going to bring something different to baseline cavi yeah i was it was actually uh it was actually triz's idea we we're kind of like you know we were really deep into the project i would say like 75 percent into the project uh and um which kind of like figuring out how do we want to finish it to like top things off because the project really kind of it took a turn like midway through when we like started to really figure out what the sound's going to be. And it started to become like super like West Coast, like classic West Coast sound. You know, we actually had a conversation about DJ Quick like midway through the project. And, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, have heard me talk about Quick before and like how inspired I am uh, by him. But he, it truly, he truly is like, you know, one of the reasons like I even like make music, you know, like his approach to music is like the way that I, I mean, I learned to approach music from hearing him talk about how he approaches music. And so Triz brought that up, you know, midway through. And I'm like, oh, man, you want like if you want to go there with it, we can definitely <laughs> like go there with it. Like no problem at all. You know what I mean? I, all you had to do is just say the word. So once he said that, it started to open up this different lane. And, um, you know, we really got into like this classic L.A sound and uh Triz had the idea to flip um Atomic Dog and I'm like man to be honest it was like kind of intimidating because that's like I mean I've have, had I've heard it flipped like a million different ways I'm like <laughs> it's something that like I probably wouldn't have on my own like wanted to like touch because like I don't know you know what I mean to me I'm like I don't know how it can be flipped differently I don't know you know so we actually um so what I did was like, man, I want to do something different. I actually have the Atomic Dog session, like the actual recording session. And I'm like, you know, I should, uh, what I should do is go in and actually use stems, like, you know, the stems from it. And rather than just like sampling the record, you know, and, and, and really kind of like build something original from the ground up. And uh, so for me, anytime I sample, I don't just sample. I, I like to sample, but then also like interpolate certain things and then add like my own layers that are like original. So it's not just like a straight up sample. Um, and that's what I did with that record, you know? And it's really actually, okay, it, it, you know, it's really based on um, Ice Cube's, uh, what is it? Uh, my Summer Vacation. Right, exactly. And so, you know, that's actually several different samples. And I'm like, man, if I could go in there and figure out how to flip the in vogue sample, which is the little vocal sample in there on top of it and kind of like pay homage to everything, like pay homage to Cube, you know, because Death Certificate to me is like top five albums of all time ever of any genre of any you know what i mean like that's one of the most like iconic albums ever and so i'm like if i could pay homage to like you know like p-funk and the west coast you know with atomic dog and also like cube at the same time i just felt like we were touching so many different classics with that but it just had to be done in a way that hasn't been done before you know so mm -hmm. i just try to do it but also make it like Triz's sound, my sound, pay homage to a classic, but also make it like 2022. So it had to like slap, it had to knock. So, you know, I just tried to fuse all of that together and, and do something original. Well, I'd say that Inland uh, accomplishes those feats. So congratulations to both y'all on that. Yeah. Now on the title track, uh, Baseline Cavi, Triz, I wanted you to speak on in the intro, in the beginning part of it, you talk about growing up in the suburbs, in the city till you were 12 and different things like that. So I wanted you, given that so much of rap is about authenticity and being street or whatever to a lot of people, not to everyone, of course, but to a lot of people, why was that something you wanted to just put out there right at the top on this, on this baseline cavi project? Because like, you know, in the black community coming up as a rapper, like if you don't have that hard street card, you know, if you ain't 
you know, been in the gang life, shot a couple people, went to jail, so dope. It's like they look at you as a square, or L7, like you look like you ain't been through it. So like I wanted to let people know off the rip, like, no, nah, I'm not no gangster. And they're, like I say in the end, I say uh, shit don't stop. Like I look like a gangster, but I don't bang. You know what I mean? Cause you know, coming up like, yeah, I may have the persona and look like that, but it's cause of my culture and what I grew up around. I didn't been through it all. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't been through a whole lot of stuff, but no, I don't gang bang. And I'm gonna let them know off the top. Like I moved to the suburbs when I was 12. I can keep it real. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it or lie and be like, oh yeah, I was on the, on the corner hustling, selling dope. I wasn't doing that. It's just, it's, I was, I wanted to let people know, look, I'm going to tell you the truth about me. You know what I mean? Like you, I said it like, yeah, I done been through eviction notices, been, been kicked out of cribs, you know what I mean? But my mom always had money for me to eat. I don't know what that feels like. You know what I mean? Like I seen my mom touch a million dollars. My mom is a real estate agent. She's a, my dad is a, uh, as well. Like I came up in a very good household. My parents have been together for 30 years. I talk about that on the, on the album. Like, I talk about both my parents. So like, I just wanted to tell the truth. I want people to know that like, I'm, I'm giving you all of me and I'm not lying to you. And this is what it is. So I'm from LA and I'm from the IE. I'm from the city and I'm from the suburbs. And that's what I wanted to give people with that intro. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that really intrigued me about the beginning of Baseline Cavi. And then uh, Seven, I wanted you to break down to the, with the cinematic thing, as far as having all the splices of the new stuff, and uh, the reports and all these different things on both uh, Baseline Cavi and The Inland, paying homage to the Ice Cube style of making music. Why did you go that route as far as adding in the news and those things? No, I mean, really, I, it was really Triz more than anything. You know, we were, we were trying to figure out how to do certain hooks. You know, Triz, like, I mean, the way that we did this album was... Um, really like um really homegrown you know what i mean we we did everything just like ourselves you know without like any outside influence on how to do like any songs for real you know and so triz like off top like you know like triz would send me demos you know of uh stuff he would just like record shoot it over and he would include like the clips in there you know and off top i was like oh man this just immediately feels like like you said, like classic West Coast bomb squad, you know what I mean, type of like production. Um, and I was like, man, if there's a way that we can make that work on this, you know, and bring that sound into 2022 using those clips and like, it just felt so classic and it felt so like LA, you know what I mean? It felt so new at the same time because like people don't do that anymore for real, you know? So it's like, it's been a minute since I've heard that infused in, in records like that. So it just, it just, to me, it just added like another layer of, layer of um, authenticity to the record. So, you know, it was really Triz, Triz's idea to do that, but um, I just tried to support that whole idea and like, you know, glue it all together. Nice. Well, Triz, throughout Baseline Cavi, one thing that I really appreciated was your uh, reflection and looking at your life and how people have treated you good and bad throughout your life. Yeah. And on 90210 in particular, I wanted you to address the line where you're talking about you got a lot of homies, but you're always by yourself. Because yeah. you do talk uh, several times throughout Baseline, Cavi, you mentioned how you like being alone or being by yourself or different things. So what is it about you or what makes you comfortable and what makes you like being by yourself? Uh, like... I, I have ADHD, I, my, my patience is very short. I get offended easily, you know what I mean? So like, um, when I'm by myself, I feel like that threat is not there. You know what I mean? Like I could be myself. Um, I have a whole lot of homeboys and everything and I love them to death. But I just, sometimes I just like, the majority of the time I like being by myself and I feel like that's, it's more trust work. I, I, could, I trust myself, you know what I mean? It's just, um, I like the dark. My wife would tell you, like, I like the, in the house, I don't keep no lights on. And when I go to sleep, she likes to keep the TV on. I keep a light on. I keep everything dark. It's just something about me. I just I just love being by myself. But I'm very social. Like, when I get around people, oh, I can work that room. I, I, I demand the room. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it's just, you know, coming up and growing up and being in certain situations. Uh, like, I've been jumped before. I didn't been through, like, I've never been bullied or no shit like that. But I've always been a skinny guy. So... I've always been like underestimated in stature. Like, so like that has always taken a toll on me. Like I've been the therapy psychiatrist. I didn't did all of that shit. So like 
it just all boils down to like one thing. It's like, you know, the majority of the time, I just like to be by myself and be alone, you know? And I get a lot of work done when I'm by myself, <laughs> straight up. Well, the important thing is to find out what works for you. 